give you an analogy of Supreme. Supreme is like that girl, everybody want her, and she might give you her number, give you some play, might give you some pussy. She don't call you, you know what I'm saying? Like, she don't pick up the phone. Like, you're like, oh, I thought you liked me. And it's like, no, nah, I really wasn't that into you. Since opening in 1994, Supreme has been the most desired clothing brand for anyone involved in streetwear. From the jump, the brand has kept its inventory limited, releasing its product in small, exclusive runs. With a limited supply and an insane demand, Supreme is the most resellable clothing brand in the world, period. I think the only brand that has anything on Supreme is obviously Nike. So how long have you been waiting? Like 14 hours. Since like 9 p.m. last night. I came here yesterday, 7 o'clock. I'm, I'm buying everything, because I'm a hype piece, you know? If you don't know that this is how it is, then you haven't been here before. You just gotta get it, you have to. And you could even like trace Supreme for like weed and stuff. I think the brand is so fucking powerful that it's making me buy a fucking crowbar. Today, resellers have shifted the playing field. The way people get their hands on Supreme is no longer limited to buying straight from the brand. That doesn't necessarily mean that consumers are in a better position than before. Buyers have more options of where to buy Supreme, but but these middlemen charge a serious markup. Do you like waiting in line or no? I don't, I don't, I don't but I don't want to pay resale. So you're a reseller? Yeah. And how much stuff did you pick up? Three sets of everything. Yo, there are people that like make their fucking living off of this. You know, if you wanted it that bad, you'd have been here before me. It's not for everyone. Everyone can try to be a reseller, but not everyone's going to be a reseller. It's difficult for anyone to put into words what makes Supreme so desirable, but it has, without a doubt, transcended its skateboarding roots and become the standard of contemporary cool. For any other streetwear brand, you've never seen Facebook groups, Instagram posts, Reddit threads. We need Supreme. Everything sells out as soon as it drops. These fucked up resellers will fuck up the market. This shit doggy dog. Supreme is like the guy that doesn't say anything and when he opens his mouth and says one word, it's the coolest shit you ever fucking heard. When people think of Supreme today, they think of this kind of big streetwear brand that kind of like sets the bar within that world. But originally, the store opened up as like more of a traditional skate shop on Lafayette Street in New York, selling a lot of like hard goods for skating. Before founding Supreme, James Jebbia opened Union, a legendary New York skate shop. He then helped open the first New York location for a notable streetwear brand Stussy in 1991. Three years later, Supreme was born. Streetwear back in the mid to late 90s is not the streetwear we know today. It hadn't been commercialized, it hadn't been widespread. Supreme is obviously a melting pot of, of culture. So you'll see things that, um, whether you were born in the 90s or the 80s, or whether you were born in the 2000s, things that are reminiscent of special moments for you when you were growing up. And I think that's why they've captured such a huge audience. Essentially, it sounds weird to say this, but I think Supreme just has great taste. They live outside the world of trends. I mean, I think they make their own trends. The original Supreme team and the first group of kids that were working at the shop, there was like a core group of 50 or 60 kids that were true skate kids. They kind of helped shape the brand as like for skaters, by skaters, with the skateboarding stuff in their DNA, as the visibility of the brand has grown globally and even here in the United States, and now that celebrities wear it, and it's like this very kind of hyped up thing, I don't think necessarily skateboarders are that market anymore. It's kind of moved beyond that scope of, of just for skateboarders. Supreme's greatest value and its greatest asset is, is Restraint. I think there's a lot of things they could have done, you know, very early on and probably could have blown it up and become, you know, really mass. And even though now that more people want Supreme than ever before, they've always kind of kept supply very much controlled and have never released a ton of pieces. So that has just based on general economics, you know, the demand has gone up, the supply has stayed relatively the same, now manifests itself as this kind of overblown hype that creates a secondary market and this kind of feeding frenzy when Supreme is releasing new stuff. I mean, James Jebbia has always said something along the lines of, even if he knows he could sell 500, he's still only gonna make 300. As an outsider, you might, you might feel like that doesn't make sense, but I feel that another thing that Supreme has done well is like, they just don't give a shit. The thing that Supreme does different is that when something sells well, they never make it again. As opposed to other brands where if a model of clothes sells really well, they will continue making it until it dies out. Supreme, if something hits 
that's like hits off the fan and it's, it's a blow up that will never make it again in order for it to become hype. And that's what essentially makes the hype of Supreme. Producing things in large quantities is kind of a thing that is old hat and of the past. And I think a lot of businesses are starting to catch up to their business model because when you make things in smaller quantities, of course, it makes it more special, it makes people want to have it even more. And the people that do get it, uh, it brings up the value of those things. A lot of people will try to use limited edition as a selling point and as a marketing gimmick where it's like, oh, you know, there's only one of X amount. For Supreme, it's just, that's how everything is. If you don't get something on the day it comes out, you might not ever get the chance to get it again. You have other skate companies like a Thrasher or Vans or you know any any of these other skate companies that pop up and do have longevity and Quicksilver, all these things that were great brands. You know, DC, they do great shit. But you can buy that shit anywhere. I, within a 10 mile radius of here, there's 15 stores that sell that shit. Whereas Supreme, you know, you can only get it here. You know, you can't go to Marshalls, you can't go to Kmart. That's what makes it different than everywhere else. Supreme only sells Supreme. North America is home to just two Supreme stores. Unless you can line up in Los Angeles or New York, buying from a reseller is pretty much the only way to get your hands on Supreme. The international demand for the brand has skyrocketed, but like in the States, the shopping options are extremely limited. Europe has just one store in London. Asia has by far the largest demand and the most stores. Japan is home to all six of the continent's stores, with three located in Tokyo alone. What I have heard from folks that have access to the inside is that they're very hesitant to open more doors simply because they're unsure if they'll actually work within certain markets. I believe the truth to be is you can put a Supreme store in the middle of anywhere. You can put a Supreme store in Nebraska and kids will get there. The demand is that high for Supreme. It's, it's funny observing um, the frenzy that goes on at Supreme. I mean, not too many stores close for a while, you know? But, you know, every seasonal transition, they, you know, put paper in the windows and, uh, you know, restock. And it's, like, really anticipated by their fans and their collectors and resellers or whatever you call them. And it's a really interesting thing you'll see in conversations and, like, message boards and on Reddit, like, you know, is Supreme just a hype brand? And I guess it's all about who's wearing it. You could have somebody that doesn't know anything about the brand that is willing to wait in line or pay double for it just so that they can be a part of it. But there's also people that really just love the brand, love the quality, and love the way the clothes look on them and um, are not really interested in making so much of a statement as staying consistent to their style. I don't think resellers are necessarily a good or a bad thing, but they are a byproduct of a culture fueled by the need to sort of have one thing that not necessarily everybody else has, and also wanting to like flex on other people because you have something that they don't necessarily have or can't get. And that sort of helps create the cachet of where Supreme is at today. What is so special about this job? The money that you're about to make. Like, Are you reselling? Hell yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Do I look like a herb right now? The resale prices of rare Supreme products can be jacked up as high as 1,200% above the original cost. Supreme's graphic tees usually run you between $36 to $44. But items like the Supreme Japan Snakeskin Box logo tee will resell for as much as $550. The Kermit the Frog tee, $600. Are you reselling any of them? Oh yeah, I got three people online. These, this is for me, this, the first set is for me. I go in for me, but I got three kids online that I pay to come out here and all that's for the resale. That's for y'all, so you know. How much are you gonna resell from this drop? 30. I've already sold two shirts, pre-sold them on eBay for $250 a pop. And how much retail were they? $44. Do you think they're worth that much? Nowhere near, nowhere near. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's worth whatever a fool's willing to pay for it. So, you know. Back up! Back up! Back! Back! Well, yo, you gotta get inside the car. New Supreme products always create a massive level of anticipation. But the most hyped release in the brand's history was set for April 4th, 2014, when it collaborated with Nike on the Foam Posit 1. Hundreds of people showed up the night before, creating a frenzied crowd that flooded the Soho streets around Supreme's New York shop. The hopeful shoppers caused so much commotion, then NYPD cancelled the release. There was some trouble with the police yesterday, you know, when the, when, the old, when the main crowd was out here, the police sprayed a little bit of pepper spray and they kind of pushed the jobs a bit. Technically, the line starts on Thursday morning, but fans of the Supreme, they start whenever they want. I can't even just like put into words like how many, like how the block was, yo. Like it was like it was like a stage almost like it was like literally like, yeah, we coming in. 
people started panicking. Chaos. I felt like niggas was hiding under cars and shit. Like, the shit was crazy. A couple people fist falling the line with the throwing out, break it up. It happened twice, two girls fighting. All right, I'm gonna come clean. I stepped on two people on, on some real shit. I, I'm coming clean. I, I stepped on, I trampled two people. This event is officially canceled. They haven't given a few today. There is no reason for you to be staying around here. Now that's where I would say Supreme made a turning point towards complete resell and value on everything really went up. When I was coming up, it was all about the hunt and, and trying to find product, getting your hands on it. You know, and that required a lot of effort. That required visiting shops in certain cities around the world when you traveled. When we look today, clearly the internet is changed at all. You can simply go online and look up a hashtag for Supreme and it's very clear that that product is really hitting a much larger, I wouldn't say mainstream, but a much larger, much wider circle than it had in the past. I think reseller culture is a direct result of brands like Jordan and brands like Supreme making things that everybody wants, but not necessarily everybody can have. Now that the internet exists, you know, everything is for sale, like Jay-Z says. And if the website's down or if it's sold out on the website, they can get it somewhere else and they're gonna have to pay a premium for it. But, you know, the premium, who invents the premium? The resellers do. The unstoppable demand for Supreme has created a reselling market that's as mysterious as it is popular. So, who are the individuals who get in line and start reselling Supreme? We dove into the unexplored world of reselling and spoke to the people behind the anonymous accounts to learn more about their operations. The whole reselling for me started maybe like in high school. First it started with sneakers, so also buying Supreme. I never, I never thought that in the future I was going to sell a Supreme or go become some sort of a uh, Supreme reseller. I'm Andre, Soul Street Sneaker Co. on Instagram and Twitter and all the, you know, different social medias. I'm a reseller, trying to sell anything I can make a dime over retail on. 32 years old, five children, five baby mothers. It's, it's a struggle, but no, nah, I'm joking. I only got two, two women, and, you know, I got rent, bills, child support, I got a car, a, a insurance payments every month. So I'm the founder of Cop vs. Job. Uh, I'm 16 years old, and I'm about to graduate high school. Right now, we're standing inside of my consignment pop-up shop that's essentially one week long is like a test to see uh, if a full-time store would work. It used to interfere with school a lot back when I had to go to like full days of classes and I was like actually camping out for Supreme. But nowadays it hasn't really gotten in the way of school at all. I buy and sell uh, Supreme. Sneakers as well, but mostly Supreme. Everyone and anyone wants to be a reseller. I uh, first started reselling like at the beginning of eighth grade. I really started with sneakers. I don't know, I always miss Supreme drops because they were always during school. I didn't actually start with sneakers. I started wearing Supreme. About a year ago, I started getting serious about reselling. I live in New York City. I go to school in Lower Manhattan High School. I'm a senior. I'm 17 years old. I own Soul Frame Con, which is a Supreme and sneaker convention where people can buy and sell and trade Supreme and sneakers. When reaching out to resellers, almost all of them were hesitant to participate. And those that did asked that their identity be hidden. When asked why? It's not my intention to be anonymous. I just don't want people to focus on myself. I want them to focus on what I what I provide for them. I'm first the collector and second a, a reseller. Only one reseller was willing to reveal his identity, hoping that it would help build up his clientele. All publicity is good publicity. Soul Street Sneaker Co. You know, if this interview helps me land a couple good high clients, then it's, it's all the more worth it to me. You know, I'm not a shy person. I'm, I'm out here. I resell. Uh, this is what I do for a living. You know, a doctor doesn't hide, you know, the fact that he does surgeries. I don't hide the fact that I'm out here buying stuff to resell it. They're scared of the store. They're scared of the repercussions. Supreme isn't a big corporate entity. It's not like a Foot Locker or a Foot Action or H&M or some company like that where, you know, they, they can't stop you. In reality, legally, maybe they can't stop you as Supreme, but they will stop you. You know what I mean? It, they, you can go in there and ask for a size and they'll tell you sold out and give it to the guy behind you. You know, there's nobody to complain to. You can write as many emails as you want and they probably won't get you anywhere. It's crews that really do this shit, you know what I'm saying? And like come down and like post up, come through, pairs, we out. We sending them off to Iowa, we sending them off to Missouri, because you know, everywhere don't get the drops that we get out here in New York. So I respect that right, you know what I'm saying, with the reseller game, you know what I'm saying, to the motherfuckers that ain't in New York. Resellers use a number of different channels to sell their product. 
While eBay was popular in the past, it seems as though Instagram is the fastest and most efficient way to get your items out there. Most of my selling comes from my Instagram. You know, just people hit me off of Instagram. I post pictures, pre-orders, or post what I have on the back end. And you know, people will contact me, text me, direct message me, and let me know what they want. Thankfully, there's a trusted platform like uh, PayPal that lets you, you know, buy with confidence and sell with a good degree of confidence. You know, if a guy has a very a strong invoice, you know, he's probably not going to scam you. Even if you get scammed in the back in the front, you'll get your money from PayPal off the back end. The biggest challenge is showing, like, one, you're legit, and two, you have the stuff. Once people know that you're legit and that you have the stuff, you become, you blow up really fast. Because everyone, there's a, there's a lot of demand for it. It's just explaining to people why you should buy from me as opposed to that random guy on eBay. I would see Supreme drops, and I and I used to like like Supreme more as a brand, and I'd be like, oh, I miss that, and I tried to go buy it on eBay, and I'd see these prices just insane, and I'd be like, well, there must be some money to be made here, and I just started going to drops and getting stuff and trying online, and yeah. And I built my eBay account, and then I just began selling more. I have an eBay. I don't like giving them the 10%, honestly. PayPal will take 3% of the transaction. There's so much competition with eBay. You have to really build up your eBay in order to sell off eBay, whereas when somebody just hits me up directly via a text message, it's more of a personal connection, and I enjoy that personal connection. Yeah, mostly online. PayPal, I have a customer base about six or seven people that I sell to every week, same customer. I have a customer in LA who uh, ships them overseas, actually. They go for a lot of money over there, smalls always. And also, um, Japan doesn't see their releases for two days after we do. So that Friday window can make or break a, a, a profit margin. Usually what happens, I'll go home and I'll immediately put it just all on eBay. I have like a, I, I have a formula on how to list. I list it, I have templates for the description and stuff and I just get it all on eBay and it usually sells in a couple of days. So I don't have to worry about like being stuck with anything. I mean, I'll do meetups occasionally on Instagram, uh, Facebook groups. You always find someone who needs it if, they ha if you have it, you know? So the Facebook group that I started was um, buying and selling Supreme vape and sneakers in general in New York City. And it was mostly created so that way I could build my reput like, reputability about as, as a reseller, so that way I could eventually open up my own store. And I say it worked out pretty well. Like I think we have almost 20,000 members in it that all almost know who I am and know that Converse Drop is legit source to get your Supreme. Facebook groups are a way for Supreme resellers to easily buy, trade, and sell their products. In creating these groups, the admins hope to gain as much exposure as possible. With this, they can sell more product at a higher cost. Like some of the other people you interviewed, uh, like or you know, whatever, he he just likes money, which is why we didn't get along. So like he got into Supreme because it started getting profitable. Like all, it's so populated right now because it's so profitable. As more and more people start to flip Supreme, a struggle resellers now face is increased competition on the supply side. Yeah, so I worked for other people uh, in the sense that I would line up for them basically and. Uh, buy them clothes and I would get enough capital from that that I was still able to save up and buy stuff for myself on the side as well. That I would sell on eBay or sell to other people and stuff like that. And then it got to the point where I figured if I can grow my own name large enough, I can actually sell other people's goods for them and take a cut. And that's how Compass's job was created, was that I can essentially sell other people's stuff, take a cut from it, and not have to invest any money into it. I think he's made a decent amount of money. He used to work for like Unique Hype and whatever. And that's how he got into Supreme because he used to like play Yu-Gi-Oh and shit with um, all the Asian people at Unique Hype. And so one day like Peter went up to him and like was like, oh, can you come wait in line for me or whatever. And so he got in that way. Yeah, the whole point is that we don't have to actually invest 80, 90, $100,000 of stuff. We can still make the, pro the profit we would make from investing that much money, but we can have other people bring it to us because we have more of a, it's more important to have a, uh, enough buyers than it is to have a lot of sellers. Right. That sounds exactly what I'm thinking right now. Uh, I guess so, I'm not sure. You can't talk about that at all. No. In November 2013, The New Yorker published an article that profiled the reselling giant Unique Hype. Sources told us Supreme was not happy with the story, and Unique Hype declined to participate in this film. So we visited the shop's location in Chinatown anyway, where we saw some of the most rare Supreme products in existence. For Supreme resellers, some of the biggest guys in the game, you know, I, I, it's unique hype. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest in the game, I think. I buy and sell with them. You know, they have things no one else has. I, I feel like unique hype has been the pioneer into like selling, uh, being a reseller in New York City at least, and it has like the biggest, biggest collection.
On any given Thursday in New York, a ton of hopeful customers will be lined up on Lafayette Street waiting for the latest Supreme drop. The lines can form as early as Wednesday afternoon and can become so massive they wrap around the block. Yeah, I mean, you can get a product any way possible. Dover Street releases them, Supreme New York, Supreme LA, if you have people over there. SupremeNewYork.com, uh, if you don't have a bot, you most likely won't get anything. Camping, and that's basically it if you live in New York. Once the hype's there, it's not going away unless they stop doing the limited. So it's really the fact that you have to camp out for it that makes it so much more desirable. It's supply and demand. What makes a crackhead smoke crack? I don't fucking know. What makes a nigga wanna fucking line up outside of fucking Supreme for two or three fucking days? I have no idea. Have I done it? Fuck yeah. Because I wanted my shit. I mean, you know, I'm amazed that people would stand online for long periods of time for anything. Right. <laughs> Me and myself, I would have had a sit. When you're out there at three o'clock in the morning, for example, and um, you're like the fifth person in line or you're or there's not a lot of people out there you can expect that in the morning it's not going to be the same. The first 50 people are gonna be like people who like ha who've been doing this for a while. Like no like regular person who's just lining up there to get it one t-shirt is gonna be the first 50 people, really. I mean, the line has changed, you know, dramatically over the past year or two, I'd say. You know, they have security now. They didn't really have heavy security the way they did before. You know, I understand, you know, these guys wanna make money or whatnot, but there's a way to carry yourselves, and sometimes they get crazy, and they'll cut the lines, and they'll be rude and disrespectful, and sometimes it gets to where it gets physical. We try not to make it physical. I don't put my hands on anybody, but on that note, I have to protect myself. I think the security guards do a decent job. I think that in some ways they're corrupt, and um, whether it's manipulating the, the lists that they make. And they're all taking bribes, too, so it's cool. Like, the security guards are? Yeah, all the time. Oh, fuck this. So people can cut the line? Yeah, if you have a hundred bucks, go ahead. You're first. Really? Yeah, why not? Y'all see where we're at on this list? What number? Do you see where we're at on the list? What is your experience with the line? What do you think about it? It's just a bunch of fuckery, you know, but, you know, you do what you do. Like, you know, the tough ones get it. If you're not about it, you don't get your shit. So, you know, you come through, you skip what you can, and, you know, you try to weasel your way up there. Doesn't matter if you're a real nigga in the front. Doesn't matter if you're getting skipped by 40 real niggas in the front. You know, if you, I might put that nigga on the line. If you, if you got, if you got the product, you're going to be one of the biggest. And these young boys got the product. You know, they out here with their whole high school class getting the product, you know, so I can't knock them. How long have you been waiting? For like, well, I was in VIP, so. What we're, does VIP mean? We're on the list, so you don't even have to come and like stay over the next day. You don't have to wait? No, I just came in the morning. Like, How did you get VIP? Because we have hookups <laughs> with the security guards. They start cutting as soon as they get here. They start cutting all day, all night. We catch who we can, we put them in the back. I like to give people warning. Look, you just ran up. Everybody just runs right up, and it just happens all day long, so we just, it's all business to no faces and no people, and I pride myself on that, but I can't be everywhere. Them two girls back there, bruh, way fucking back there. They was here since last night before the fucking store closed. They not crying, they not complaining, they not pushing nobody, they not acting stupid like niggas is in the front of the line. That's fucking crazy. Supreme takes measures against resellers, so these guys do what they have to to get their inventory up at every release. If you want to get the stuff, you have to, like, work for it. Sometimes I have to pay people to come out here with me and stand on the lines just so I can get more product. You know, they limit you on everything, one of this, one of that. With Supreme, they won't sell me certain sizes. I'm a bigger guy. I wear an XL. They know I resell, so they won't give me a medium a lot of times. Maybe. One out of every five times I ask for something in a medium, I'll get a size medium. You know, they'll look at me and say, you don't wear a medium, you wear a large, extra large, so I gotta take the large, extra large. So if I want a medium, which will go for a premium dollar more than a large or extra large, well, I gotta bring a little kid with me. Supreme, obviously, for a simple reason, has a one limit per customer on all their products, because just to make sure that a reseller doesn't buy out the entire store. So if you want, if there's a t-shirt that's coming out and you want to get 10 of them, and you have to bring nine other people to help you get that, and then you have to pay them, but it's all cost of doing business, because the, the money you make off the 10 t-shirts is more than the money that you pay the people. I'll pay people to stand online, depending on who they are, how much they're worth to me as an individual, and, and how much the item they're getting is worth to me as an item. Because, you know, they're, they're kids I can bring out here online, and they'll stand online, but they're lifeless drones. You know, they're not, they're not putting in the work to get in the front of the line. I'm here, I'm here, you gotta yell. You gotta make sure he sees you or else if, you, if you're not aggressive, not really aggressive, but if you don't make yourself heard, 
you'll just stay in the same spot and not move before you know they'll be gone. And then it also varies tremendously on the item. For a box logo, see, I might give a kid $50, which is worth more than the t-shirt itself, but I can sell the box logo for $250, $300, so it's worth it. Like, the way that I know that most of the, the people that are lining up for me aren't gonna run away with the money is I start out with a really small amount, so I'll tell them, hey, can you go buy me this t-shirt? Next time I'll say, hey, can you go buy me this hat and this t-shirt? Next time I'll say, can you buy me you know, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars of stuff, and sooner or later I'll get to the point where I can give them ten thousand dollars and not have to worry about it like, disappearing. Yeah, I had two campers that were lining up, and I paid them, I think, each thirteen hundred dollars to get me what I wanted, and they just never showed up. So what happened? They got away with the money. <laughs> when people are first introduced to the resale market, prices appear insanely high. But like any marketplace, the prices are what they are for a reason. To know what sells and to know what buy, like what to buy from Supreme is just, you have to gain like the feel for the market. You have to understand after like a few years, like what, hold, what to hold on to, what will go up, what will go down in value. It's really something you can only learn over time. At least for me, it's hard, it's hard to know every week. Or at least when the preview drops, I always uh, look through the pictures a hundred times and see and see for myself what items can potentially sell. With shoes, it can sometimes be tougher, but with Supreme, there's usually like items that like, because everyone talks about them, like there's just certain items like you know will like sell out of me. Like anything, the box logo tee, box logo hoodie. Box logo t-shirt is probably one of the most coveted items in Supreme, period. Either the hoodies or the t-shirts, and they always sell out. So that's not, that's a no brainer, you, you buy it and you know that you're gonna make some sort of profit. The box logo's coming out, you know, and it only happens once a year, once a year. So it's, you just gotta get it, you have to. I don't know, it's just like everybody loves it. It's got like just like such a clean design, just like a simple box, a white t-shirt, like you can't go wrong wearing it. And why is the shirt so special? Because it's supreme. Like, everybody loves it. Even if I'm not a huge Yankee fan, but I'm just gonna get the t-shirt, this box logo. Even though you see it everywhere, Supreme's box logo isn't exactly original. The white feature typeface on a red background was directly inspired by the work of American artist Barbara Kruger. She never spoke on the connection until 2013, when former Complex editor Foster Kamer reached out about it. Kruger responded with a blunt statement calling Supreme a ridiculous clusterfuck of totally uncool jokers. I mean, I try to sell my, my items for double retail just because sometimes you'll get a shirt. For instance, it's 50 retail, I'll sell for 100, 110. Hoodies always double retail, you know? Uh, most people who do consignment shops are either taking 15 to 20% for their stuff, but because uh, hats and t-shirts and, and, and other things are much cheaper, we take a lower uh, cut because if we took a larger cut, essentially the, the, the seller wouldn't be making any profit. So we charge uh, anywhere between 10 to 15% depending on what you're bringing to us. So they name their price and we take our cut after that. And for our own stuff, we base it off market value. Soul Prime Con. Soul Frame Convention is basically Soul for Sneaker, Prem for Supreme, which also then stands for just any other kind of like hype clothing that you could resell, like HBA. And basically, we announce a convention two months in advance, and you could buy a table for $65 to $100. It depends on like where the event location is. We try and sell like 60 tables, depending on where it is. We've gotten bigger over the past three conventions. And then we sell tickets for around $15, $20. They started at $10, but more and more people, just like more and more people are getting into Supreme, like more and more people want to come to the conventions. So the last one, we had like 700 people. Reselling has respect issues to it. You know, not everyone can resell. Not only you're making money off someone, but you're doing it the right way. You're not doing it like a grimy, you know, jerk off in the street who, who knows they're making money. You, you gotta be humble about it. That's how you run a business. It's not for everyone. Everyone can try to be a reseller, but not everyone's going to be a reseller. You know, you got guys out here reselling stuff that are some selling it for extremely under market because they just need to get that dollar back. And I, I, I understand niggas is broke. I'm broke, I'm poor as fuck, be dead ass. I live in the hood. I got plastic covers on my couches. I don't got no money, <laughs> poor. But, you know, I won't, I won't sit there and take something that's on the market doing $200, $300 and sell it on the market for $10 over the fucking retail just because I need that money I spent on it back. I'd rather sell it to another guy that's gonna make that dollar back. You got some resellers that actually just make the shit more available after the fact. In the Supreme community, sometimes, just like I said, you have to be sort of a collector first because you have to appreciate sometimes the items and, and sometimes people do appreciate the items a year or two years ahead. 
So sometimes you gotta maybe hold on to items. A lot of kids try to sell at the same time. And the market is, is flooded with, with items that release the same week. Whether reselling part-time or full-time, Supreme's wild popularity guarantees there's money to be made. Since I started reselling, I've made a little over 5K probably. Uh, since I've started reselling, I've made around $4,000. You know, I'm up pretty good for the year. Uh, I'm, I'm doing well. It was the first year I decided to settle down and like really just do the math and see if reselling was worth it, you know, as opposed to having a regular job. And I'm actually taking numbers for the year. Thousand for the year. So the conventions, um, each one I've profited. Like the first one, I made around seven thousand dollars, and the second one was about the same. And then the third one, I made like ten thousand dollars. We've probably sold like thirty, forty, maybe fifty thousand dollars of stuff in the past few months. But um, in terms of profit, I have no idea. I haven't checked in a while. I don't really want to say how much I made because I don't. Like I said, it's not really about the profits or how much I made. It's more about. For me, for me, it's an experience. Resellers are typically hated for what they do, both by the consumers they sell to and the brands they profit off of. Despite achieving various levels of success, a reseller is usually seen as the bad guy. I think in Asia, the stigma is not as bad as it is in America. It's actually just accepted. You know, people resell anything. Oddly enough, like, I think people hustle a lot in America to make money, but I don't know why there's a, such a stigma against reselling. I personally think it's not to the best benefit of the culture when everything is so monetarily driven. Well, the Supreme resellers are, are hated because uh, it's some sort of taboo. The value of Supreme is only maintained by the people that buy it, who they don't give a fuck about. It's literally drugs. It's literally drugs. A crack dealer don't give a fuck about no crack fiend. If they wanted it to, to, to stop, they, they could make it stop very easily by producing three times as much stuff or selling to department stores or whatever, which they don't want to do. And as long as they don't mind sharing the profits with their customers, which in a way is kind of, you know, it could be seen as idealistic. But I do know that uh, sometimes they know who sells uh who tries to resell, so they, they know them because they line up every week. They tell them you can't come anymore, you, you're not allowed in the store anymore. The fact that sometimes the price difference between what they paid for it and what they're selling it for is just absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes it's double the price, sometimes it's triple. If it's a collaboration, sometimes people are marking it up eight times the amount that they sold it for. It becomes a bit difficult to defend a reseller. When you triple the price or quadruple the price, you're being a bit abusive. So I'm sure that in the eyes of Supreme that it's not something that they support at all, and there's no reason for them to. So here's the big question. What does Supreme think about resellers? It's no secret the brand isn't exactly a fan of the people who flip their product. In a 2002 interview with streetwear blog Riff Trooper, James Jebbia said he doesn't like reselling simply because it makes the brand unaffordable. If it were up to him, someone would buy Supreme only because they plan on wearing it and not selling. I think it's unfair to people who've been waiting a long time. I think life isn't fair and they choose to be here, so that's on them. They see that Supreme needs them more than they need Supreme, but in reality it's the other way around. You know, if Supreme wasn't there selling clothes every week, 70% of the resellers would be broke. First and foremost, reselling is a business. But that doesn't mean these guys aren't enjoying the hustle. Because I just want box logo stickers and like uh, a t-shirt, that's it. Can you get that any other day? Yeah, you can, but camping out was kind of fun. Yeah? Are you a high beast then? Yeah, I'm a high beast. I've met some of my bestest friends online, man. And it's sad because, you know, we don't fuck with each other mostly unless it's on the line. But, you know, when you're online, we're friends again, till, till the door opens at least. You know, it, it builds a relationship. You're out there camping with the same guys over and over and over and over for every different fucking release. You're out here on the same line with the same people. You have no choice but to become friends. I know kids, and I respect them. I totally respect them because they could be out here robbing motherfuckers and have it, you know what I'm saying, fucked up out here in these streets, but no, they go into a place like Supreme, where they go in and bait, you know, when it's a high drop, where they go on the, the APCs when Kanye got a collaboration. You got kids that's dedicating their they time and effort into the hustle, which I respect. My family is supportive because uh, they know that I'm working, 
they, they, they do support me 100% because I'm not doing anything negative. I'm just trying to put some money in my pocket. My parents just think like the whole culture is really stupid. Because I mean, it, it is kind of like nonsensical when you break it down. She's more of a mom, I guess. Like, more like get your grades up, stuff like that. And then my dad is like supportive, but he's also like following my mom because like she's like his wife. Like, <laughs> So yeah, my parents are extremely happy about me essentially running my own business. They couldn't care less about it being supreme or, or anything else. It, it's just learning how to run my own business like shows them that I'm not smoking crack on the corner instead of fucking like learning how to sell clothes. My girlfriend, uh, she sometimes doesn't get it, but she's supportive. She doesn't understand why we do it, which is a lot of people from the outside, they don't get it. But once you're in the inside, they understand it. Despite the criticisms it faces, reselling is no different than running any other type of business. From building relationships to aggressive competition, it's undeniable that many resellers can only be defined as entrepreneurs. At the end of the day, they have ultimately benefited Supreme, creating a force unlike anything seen in streetwear before, both in hype and profit. Without resellers, Supreme would not be the cultural powerhouse that it is today. Like, I really do like running a business, like just running like the small business that I have, like selling stuff every couple of days. Like, it is kind of fun to build something up and to work at it and to do the cost and to pay the cost of doing business and earn the profits. But I'm not sure if I want to do something with business, but it has made me interested in that kind of stuff. Well, the goal of Cop vs. Drop right now is that after essentially I graduate school, or even earlier than that, is that we want to open a full-time store in New York City. That's essentially like with LA in, in LA, but in New York, because they don't have one right now in New York that does Supreme, Bait, like Jordan, Nike. They have Fight Club, but that's purely shoes, and it's, it's actually kind of like hard to sell in there. So we want to open like a full-time Supreme and Bait. Uh, consignment shop. I'm reselling so I can't resell no more until I find a good nine to five that's gonna pay me, you know, the dollar amount I need to stop reselling. You know, I, I'd much rather have, you know, a good career. I'd much rather be behind the camera working at Complex with you, Emily. But, you know, it's, I don't have a fucking degree. I don't have credentials, you know what I mean? I, I fancy myself a pretty intelligent guy and I've always been able to fit into any atmosphere and anything I've ever tried, which is great for me. But, you know, to get a door open for me to do something else, you know, if it opens one day, then I'm fucking, I'm out of here. But for now, you know, it's reselling. It's reselling, reselling, reselling. McDonald's at 4 o'clock in the morning, smoke cigarettes, smoke weed, drink green. We get it fucked up, we get it crooked. You know how we walking out here. And where do you get the money to buy this? Uh, I work. What do you do? I sell drugs. Well, right now I don't have a job, but hopefully my mom will hold me up until I get a job. I know what the fuck y'all doing. Well, I'm a high school teacher, so I know how kids are. Anything for fashion and to be cool and to fit in, so it doesn't, I think it's great. Tell us what we're waiting for today. You're waiting, for, you're waiting for a Michael Jordan Supreme release. And are you a fan of Jordan? Absolutely. And how many NBA titles has he won? I believe 10. And are you a Jordan fan? OD. And how many NBA titles has he won? <laughs> so how many NBA titles did he win? Is you trying to play me right now? So what are you lining up for today? I'm lining up for this Yankee Supreme collab. Are you a fan of the Yankees? Never. Hate baseball. Shit is trash. <laughs> Why are you buying it? Because it's Supreme. So you're thirsty like that? Ooh, tengo la sed. What do you do for work? You know, I trap. Nah. <laughs> what, what else? What else? Oh, I got some. Oh, the bag? Oh, the tote bag. I don't oh. need that. I'll wipe my ass with this later. <laughs>